All so, right. We should be live. Just let us know. Do you see us? So, Somebody, I'm waiting for the... So you'll see at the right hand, Penny, there's a comment on the sidebar on the right. There's comment banners. And do and you see that? Yeah. You can see comments. Right. Oh, okay. So how do you know we're live? Uh, because at the top right, at uh, top left, you'll see live 20 seconds. Oh, I see. Got it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Learning as we go here, or I am. <laughs> well, so, well, so am I. We don't do this so often. So, all right. So we are live. So hi, everybody. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so this is a broadcast, especially just for Patreon people. So we're going to be a small group. Um, so, you know, decided to do something special just for you today. Um, so we'll have more time to answer questions and um, address little topics that you guys might want to talk about. So um, today is very specifically on guided imagery and the significance of that, especially at this time. So I'll pass it over to Penny and she'll start with an introduction of what is guided imagery. So there you go. Uh, okay, so, um, so let me say hi to everyone. Um, and just, um, I, I would probably revise what Daphne just said a little bit. We're gonna do some guided imagery, but we're gonna talk about why you do it and what is symbolism, etc. So I got a couple of things here that I want to mention. Um, so the first question is symbols. What are they? Um, I think the big thing with a symbol is that it's a it's energy in a visible form. Most people don't see energy unless, at least most people in the 3D world, don't see energy unless it's three-dymensional. So um, symbols in this world are three-dimensional and we see them and we don't even realize what we're seeing, but it's energy, it's got intent, it's got consciousness, it's got purpose, everything, everything is conscious. So, um, so that's, if you can just hang on to that, I'm going to try and simplify this a little bit. Um, and then, so who makes the symbols? Well, that should be pretty obvious. It's us. We make what we are capable um, of doing. So as we evolve and understand energy differently, we are able to make different kinds of symbols. So we didn't understand energy uh, back in the, say the 18, well, maybe let's go back further, the 1400s. We didn't understand energy the way we understand it today. Back in the 1400s, we had different ideas of what energy was, but we knew how to make stuff. Um, and we thought we were making stuff out of other stuff. But if everything is energy, which it is, then you make stuff out of out of energy. And the more you can play with those energies, ooh, the more you can really begin to play with what do you want in your world? How can you shape this? What can you insert? What can you extract? Um, how do you congeal energies? How do you move them in a direction? Those all answers to those questions give us the ability to make computers, to, um, you know, do all sorts of different things. So, and the computer itself is a huge representation of a representation. So now you're starting to get levels um, involved here and levels mean other dimensions are begin to be understood and, and they're available. So we make the symbols and I would say the other important piece to that is we assign the meanings to those symbols. So, um, you know, what is the meaning of a pencil? What is the meaning of an iPad? Um, what is the meaning of a legal pad? Uh, you know, the meaning is, well, I, I bought that little pet so I'd have something to write on because it's going to hold my thoughts. Um, a cup of water, the meaning of the cup is that I can have water convenient and I can take it with me wherever I go. I don't have to live right next to the mountain stream 
or the river or the lake or, or the big mud puddle or whatever, um, that kind of thing. So, um, and of course, you know, the meaning of a pencil or a pen is um, because you want to be able to transform your thought into something that other people can see on a page. So that's a pen or a pencil, you know, that kind of thing. So we assign the meaning and it's obvious. Some things are not so obvious, but we'll get into that um, after we do the, the guided imagery. So, um, so the next question is how and why does guided imagery work? How and why do symbols work? You know, why is it that we can do a guided imagery and I can draw a whole bunch of meaning from that? Um, the bottom line is because I can read the language of energy um, and how it works is, I don't even know if I can explain that. It works because uh, let me say something silly. It works because we make it work, um, which really isn't so silly. We decide what we're going to make. We decide why we're making that. I, I need a cup so I can take this river or this water a mile away from the river and still have something to drink, um, et cetera, et cetera. And, and we decide the utility and the meaning of something. We don't go any further than that, and we should. That's, you know, so guided imagery works because we assign the meaning to things. And you'll see that a little more clearly. I've done a couple of these. Um, and so you'll, I hope you'll see that a little bit after we do the guided imagery. Have a little more understanding of um, the language of energy and symbols. Um, and I really don't want to say why it works until after the guided imagery. <laughs> okay. But um, the significance of symbols and language, um, some people would say, well, because it allows us to communicate. Um, some is because some symbols anchor, um, I'm going to say, like a, a, an idea, some anchor an activity. So for instance, the flag of the United States anchors an idea called the United States. Um, you know, and, and, and so uh, a computer anchors um, a corporation, that kind of thing. Um, a computer is, n well, I can't really say that anymore, but in the old days, uh, you didn't have a computer in your garden. You didn't need it. It had no utility in the garden. It might have had utility in shipping your products to some other place, but that was about it. <coughs> Excuse me. So, it, you know, so symbols, um, we often categorize those. If you're, sim let's um, go back to... Um, I can't remember the name of the jeans. There was a point when my kids all had to have a certain pair of jeans because those were the only jeans that were acceptable. And if you didn't have those kinds of jeans, it signified that you were not interested in belonging or you couldn't afford to belong or you didn't want to belong or you were making a statement about, you know, I'm, I'm not part of you guys, that kind of thing. So... Um, we assign all these meanings to things, and the problem is we almost never examine the meanings that we have assigned to anything. And that's a problem for us as a group of people trying to, you know, revamp the entire reality, which it's in the process of revamping. <laughs> so, um, and the significance of symbols and language uh, it's it's almost too big to say anything about the significance of language is that it allows us to communicate. Um, when I talk about the language of energy, I am actually referring to the way that people saw the world before the Tower of Babel or Babel. 
They saw it as energy. Um, they saw energy working. That was the way they communicated. They communicated in terms of symbols of that energy. What happened with the Tower of Babel? Um, sometimes called the turning point of Babel. Tour, T-O-U-R, um, is another term that is often referred to um, this is the tour of Babel. Um, people could deal with energy and symbolism and all that just fine until they started trying to build a structure. And then you have a need for precise measurement. Um, and that is, was the turning point. It didn't happen all at once even though the Bible <coughs> would have you believe that. <clears throat> I may lose my voice here. I've been on the phone and computer since 3.30. So um, the, um, the turning point was this tower that they were trying to construct. And now you need more than symbolism. You need a hard, cold facts and figures. And that was kind of the end, the fascination with the measurement. And what can you do with this? Open this entirely new perspective on the world. And so seeing the world as energy and talking about it as energy and responding to it as energy kind of got pushed aside. And we have been on track um, with this love of measurement for a very long time and and it does open doors and it does make other things possible and it does allow us to explore and experiment with what can you make here and what can you do with what you make and how do you interact with what you make and what does that thing you made do for you in terms of your overall development because that's what it's all about so the significance of language depends on the language you're speaking. If it's the language of energy, that's one thing. If it's a refinement of that language into numbers and words, and, um, and now a whole bunch of assigned meanings to those numbers and words, then you have um, that's your door. Those are some of your doors of possibility. So, um, in terms of, uh, symbols, one of the things, one of the great accomplishments, which you see in the pyramids, um, is that people encoded their knowledge in something that, um, embodied their knowledge to that point. So you can see when you study the, the pyramid, the Great Pyramid, that the knowledge about our world was definitely, uh, it, it, was, it was there. It existed, people understood it, they knew how to use it, et cetera, et cetera. And so now we have this, uh, we've lost the language of energy. We've gotten all bamboozled by the language of science, we'll call it, measurement, science and math. And now we have to bring those two back together. So, um, so let's, um, um, I, think, I think that maybe is all I want to say here. So let's do the little guided imagery. Guided imagery only takes a couple of minutes, but um, then going through it takes forever. <laughs> so uh, let's see here. Um, okay, so for this, you need a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil. And, and what I want you to do is to be able to um, close your eyes and envision something and then break that and go write it down. And then go back to closing your eyes and then break that and, and write it down. That's that ability to go back and forth between the two worlds is really important. If you can only be in a meditative state um, and you, you know, that's it. 
and you can't go you can't go right back to it or you can't come out of it and do something practical like write something down and then go right back into the state then you're not you're missing something there that kind of operate on demand as you say so that's really a key piece so that eventually what you do is you operate in the practical world while you're still in the state um, the altered state and it doesn't have to be altered a lot although it can be um, so i want you to get comfortable with moving back and forth in and out of that state of of uh, i'm gonna say envisioning okay um, okay, so uh, this this little guided Im imagery session is um, is it has it's called the vacation. Okay, so um, and we have there's some things that you're going to have to choose, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, <laughs> um, so uh, you know, sit back, close your eyes, take a deep breath or two, all the way to your toes. Fill your belly, fill your armpits, um, fill at the back of your neck, you know, your throat, etc. And um, when when you're done breathing real deep a couple of times, then just breathe naturally at your own pace. And imagine, close your eyes and imagine that long ago and not so far away, which is how many fairy tales start, <laughs> long ago and not so far away, um, there was a young human who was living and working and working and living. And one day this individual became you. You suddenly noticed your own existence. So, and you, you, you're you working and living on planet earth, just living and working, working and living. And one day you decide you need a vacation. So then you decide, well, you know, I. Maybe I can combine some things. I can have a vacation and also learn something more about the rest of the world. Thus, you know, getting a break from your usual routine and educating yourself a little bit more about what's on the planet with you. So you decide you're going to take a trip to visit another country. Okay. So see yourself making plane reservations and, um, you know, packing your suitcase and stuff. And when the day comes and, you know, and, and your vacation starts, you get on the plane and you take off. And you're headed out over the big water towards your destination somewhere. And all goes well for a while. But then imagine that a big storm comes up. Big storm. And lightning strikes your plane and it breaks apart, dumping you in the water. So see yourself in the water and find yourself swimming for your life. Um, and, and just, you know, the storm is still going on. And so you, and you're swimming away. Never mind the suitcase, never mind the cell phone, never mind the purse, never mind anything. You're just swimming for your life. And then you see something out there that it's kind of not too far away that you could maybe swim to and hang on to. And so, you know, swim over to that thing and grab onto it and notice what it is. And these are your choices. Okay. So is it a rowboat? Is it a freighter? Is it a sailboat? Is it an ocean liner? Is it a raft? or a canoe. So, you know, some kind of watercraft is on the water with you. And let's go over it again. A rowboat, a freighter, a sailboat, an ocean liner, a raft, or a canoe. So write down which one of those things it is. Okay. And after you write it down, just go back and Close your eyes and let's continue with our imagery. So get on or in whatever this thing is that showed up and just relax for a moment. You know, it's like, oh, okay. Um, I'm okay. 
And, and while you're sitting there relaxing, notice that the storm is getting worse by the minute. And you're trying to help this craft paddle, you know, move ahead. And after a very short time, whatever craft you were in that you thought would save you begins to break up. And you find yourself back in the water. So once again, swimming for your life, keeping an eye out for something to hang on to. So swim along and after what seems like a long time, see something else floating in the water, some debris. Swim toward it and grab onto a piece of it and ask yourself, is it one of these choices? Okay, is it a life preserver? Is it an oar? O-A-R? Is it a piece of wood? Is it a piece of the plane that you were flying in? Is it some sort of inner tube or inflatable mattress or something like that? So let's go back over those again. Is it a life preserver? Is it an oar? Is it a piece of wood? A piece of the plane? Or an inner tube of some kind of inflatable thing? Inflatable mattress, maybe. Okay. So grab on to whatever that is and hanging on to that, using that kind of for support, continue to swim and keep swimming and keep swimming until you come to an island and you can finally make it to shore. So when you get up on the shore and you sit there catching your breath, become aware of the island itself. So now that you have to make another choice. Is this island the Galapagos Islands? You have six choices here. Galapagos? Is it Rover Island? R-O-V-E-R? Is it the island of Cyprus? Is it Oak Hill? Oak Island? Not Oak Hill, Oak Island. Is it Haiti? Or is it the Seychelles? So choices again. The Galapagos? Rover, Island of Cyprus, Oak Island, Haiti, or the Seychelles. Seychelles is S-E-Y-C-H-E-L-L-E-S. -E -E okay, so you're on this island. You're aware of where you're at. And as you try to rest and relax, marveling that you're still alive, one of the creatures on the island comes to investigate you as a new person or presence on the island and says something to you. So, two things to write down here. Listen to what the creature says. Note what the creature is and write that on your paper. What was the creature and what, was, what did that creature say to you? Okay, and when you when we're talking about whatever the creature said to you, write down the message exactly as you first heard it. And then write down the various things you think it might mean or what you drew from it. And that's it. You're on the island. So we're done. So let's talk about this when you're done with your creature and your whatever they said to you, whatever that creature said. So... Okay, so that's a guided imagery called the vacation. So now um, let's go over, well, let me not go too fast. <laughs> um, hopefully you guys are uh, able to um, keep up with me. I do tend to move pretty fast, and there's a reason for that, you know, because um, consciousness is a hungry little bugger. It doesn't like to dawdle. As soon as you dawdle, it's off doing something else. So, um, okay, so a couple things. Um, so the first set of things, now that you wanna make some notes here, so you, you need your paper and pencil here. Um, so the first thing, the boat, the freighter, the sailboat, the ocean liner, uh, the raft, the canoe, that, that choice symbolizes what you need to know about where you are headed 
and how you are most likely to handle the changes in our world. Okay, so um, the first set of choices, whatever that first choice was, robo, freighter, sailboat, ocean liner, raft, or canoe, indicates what you need to know about where you're headed and how you're most likely to handle the changes in our world. Okay, so what you need to know and how you'll handle the changes. Okay, that's the first set of choices. The second set of choices, um, which are the piece of wood, um, the plane, the oar, the inner tube, the life jacket, um, and oh, you know what? I skipped one. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, I skipped one. Uh, all right, we, we won't go there. We won't worry about it. Um, that's interesting. I don't do that very often. Huh. Okay, so the, the second set of choices indicates what you have to face in order to navigate your future. What you have to face in order to navigate your future. Okay, so the third set of choices, Galapagos Island, Rover, Island of Cyprus, Oak Island, Haiti, the Seychelles, um, that number three, third choice, indicates what you personally need to overcome or to achieve a favorable outcome for yourself. Okay, what you need to achieve a favorable outcome for yourself amidst all these changes, everything happening out there in the world. You know, for yourself in the current crisis kind of thing. So that's number three. And then uh, number four, whatever the creature was that came up to you and said something to you, that creature symbolizes the new you. Okay. So, you know, what, and the message is a direct message for you. So now let's go back. Um, let's see here. Let's go back to uh, what the choices mean. So if you chose the rowboat, let's go back to choice number one rowboat, freighter, sailboat, etc. The rowboat in is what you need to know about where you're headed and how you're most likely to handle the changes in our world. And rowboat is about is fighting and blaming. So I hope you didn't choose the rowboat. <laughs> if you did, it's just a piece of information for you that basically you might want to evaluate. That's why you do a guided imagery, okay? To evaluate the deep self. Uh, the freighter is, the freighter says or indicates or symbolizes that everything is going to fall apart in your world. So you're headed toward a point where everything is going to fall apart for you. And, you know, what are you going to do about that? How are you going to handle that? The sailboat is a symbol of everything you have, everything you're doing is going to be sold or given away. Cheap. Sail. Sailboat. Okay. The ocean liner symbolizes an effort to profit from the changes. In other words, I'm going to make money or I'm going to use this opportunity to, you know, make a profit or something like that. So, okay. An ocean liner is an effort to profit from the changes. And maybe not just financially, some other way. Uh, the raft, if you chose the raft, um, that indicates that you're headed towards survival mode only. That's uh, pretty rough, survival mode. And the last choice, canoe, indicates that you need to discover and steer a new course. 
you're going in a direction that is not going to, that you're not going to like. You need to steer a, new, a whole new course. So those are the, the meanings. Um, okay, choice number two, which has to do with what do you have to face um, inside yourself in order to navigate your future? So um, we have the piece of wood, and that's the first choice. And that indicates the thing that you need to face is the regrets that you have about your lack of action or um, your, uh, you didn't prepare. So if that's what you have to face in order to navigate your future, just face it. Maybe you didn't prepare. You know, from my point of view, it's never too late. Something you'll come up with something. Um, so the second thing is a piece of the plane. If you've um, grabbed onto a piece of the plane, that that symbolizes your need to stay focused and stop being distracted. Too many distractions that are meaningless. Okay. Um, the third thing is the oar from the rowboat. Um, and the, the, this symbolizes a question. What would a new life require from you? Would you need new education? Would you need a new house? Would you need a new partner? Would you need a new business, a new job? What would a new life require from you? Uh, the next thing is the inner tube. And the inner tube is... Um, you're going to have to go into the deep self, the inner self. Um, spirituality must be integrated. If you've all, always been just about the externals, then it's time to be about the internals. Who is that deep self? Do you know him or her? <laughs> um, okay, the next thing, the life jacket. Um, what you have to face in order to navigate the future is that you're trying to preserve the old life. You're trying to preserve the old ways. And I don't think that that's a good, I don't think that's workable. Okay. And then the last thing, the inner tube or the inflatable mattress, um, the task is to recognize useful ideas that can be applied. Um, and that involves actually looking and keeping an eye out for what's new. If you have a new world, some of the old stuff doesn't work in it. So recognize useful ideas that can be applied. Okay. So then let's go on number three. Question or choice number three symbolizes what you personally need to achieve a favorable outcome for yourself in our current crisis. So, you know, that you're on an island now, okay? Um, the Galapagos Islands indicate that you need a connection to Mother Nature. Need that in order to have a favorable outcome. Um, Rover Island, if you chose Rover Island, um, then you need to let go and just be lost for a while. Wander around. Because in the wandering, you get a picture of what's really happening, a more realistic view of what's going on. Um, if you chose the island of Cyprus, so what you personally need is a whole new world view. Okay. And a new way, not just the new view, but a new way of expressing it so that it can spread to other people, nurture other people, comfort other people, invite other people. So that new worldview has to have some new way of you talking about it. And it can't be angry and it can't be vengeful and it can't be silly or it can't be fantasy land. Um, that just doesn't work. Um, okay, next thing. If you chose Oak Island, then um, what you need, you're going to need some personal strength 
and family and tradition. Just the opposite of letting go. You know, the Rover Island was let go, be lost for a while. Um, Oak Island is what are your roots? What are your traditions? Where's your family? And I'm not talking just your brothers and sisters or blood family. Where is your family of like minds? And you might need some strength. Okay. Uh, if you ended up in the Caribbean on the island of Haiti, um, you what you need is to find a way to deal with anger and resentment and jealousy and competition. Okay, so Haiti symbolizes um, a, a, you need to find some way to deal with anger and resentment and competition, etc. Okay, and the last choice is the Seychelles. Um, that says that you may need to consider moving to a new place, a whole new place, different location. So... Um, so those are the island choices. And then the last set of choices, which are um, the creature that came to give you, to say something to you, um, was that creature a turtle? Um, if it was a turtle, the message is move slowly and retreat often back into quiet private shell. You know, move slowly back into quiet private shell. Okay. If it was a bird, the bird is the symbol of developing consciousness, freeing consciousness so that it can fly above all of the crap. So develop your consciousness, any kind of bird um, at all. If it was a lizard, um, the lizard would, the message of the, of the lizard or what the lizard symbolizes is you, you really need to regenerate yourself. This is the new you. Um, you will be completely regenerated, completely rebuilt, renewed, restored, etc. It may or may not feel like that right now, but that's where you're headed. That's your actual outcome. Uh, let's see, if it was an insect, um, you know, some kind of flying bug. Um, the message says, stay small and under the radar and start making small changes in every area of life. Never mind the big splashy, I'm doing this now. That lasts usually for about three days and then we've gotten ourselves into so much uproar, we can't keep it up. So the insect, any kind of insect, the message is start small and start making small changes in every single area of your life. Even if all you do is sit on a different side of the kitchen table in the morning, just start with that. Or you move your silverware door to some other place, or you let your dog out a different door than you normally let the dog out of, or, or, or. Um, start with small changes, okay? Uh, if it was a monkey, then the message is it's time to play. It's time to explore. It's time to go back to having fun with your life. Try new things. You're going to love the new earth. It's really a great monkey is a great symbol. Um, and then if it was anything four-legged, except for a lizard, Anything four-legged, a cat, a big cat, a, a wild dog, um, what else might you find on an island? I don't know, um, whatever it was. Any four-legged creature says everything you have will probably be destroyed, and that will be a huge benefit to you in cleaning up your world and the world around you. So don't fret about that. Any four-legged indicates it's time to clean up the world. Absolutely. You know, get, get rid of all your stuff. You're probably going to lose it all. Um, or And let me say this. You might not lose it as in, um, you know, somebody comes and takes it away from you. You might suddenly realize this stuff doesn't mean anything to me. 
when your spirituality changes, your meanings change, sometimes pretty drastically. You know, if that means you don't love your wife or your husband anymore, that's a problem. <laughs> or you realize, I never did. That's a problem. Um, if you suddenly don't want the car that you have always insisted you had to have, or you don't want the food you always thought you needed to have, or you, the clothes don't matter, or the job doesn't suit you or whatever, you may lose your attachment to all that stuff, which is the same thing as losing it. Okay? So the message is, rebuild a clean world. Okay. So the message that you heard, that's a message for you. And at this point, I would say, okay, I think, you know, is there anybody who's got any question about something specific? that you saw that you can't fit in or in any way, or maybe um, you didn't see a, you know, a sailboat. The one thing that I forgot in uh, question number two, uh, piece of wood, a piece of plane, the oar, the inner tube, the life jacket, the, the sixth thing was a bottle or container or some kind of, of thing floating, you know, that was full of air. So in case you saw a bottle, um, Let's see. Well, maybe I did say that. Okay, I recognize useful ideas that can be applied. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, did I say that or did I not say that? Um, so anyway, if you have any questions, um, go ahead and, and put them. We'll try to get them out of the chat. Um, I see Rachel's in the Galapagos. It's all going to be okay. Um Okay, so well, I just posted. Um, Heidi had something different with the with the little. Oops, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I see it. So, what does it mean if a Komodo dragon with a wizard Merlin met you on your island and said, "Welcome to your magical island"? Okay, um, so the the Komodo dragon is actually a form of the lizard, and so it's a huge, huge symbol of regeneration. Um, and part of the lizard's message or symbolism is becoming an eternal being. So moving toward enlightenment, once you turn into light, you become an eternal being. In other words, you don't have any flesh to die. And, and you still look the same. You still pretty much operate the same. But you're made of light instead of material stuff that degenerates. So the Komodo dragon is a huge um, message in terms of enlightenment, regeneration. Um, Merlin is an invitation to start using your own magic wherever you land. The I land island is wherever you land, period. So, you know, if you landed, um, let's say on Rover Island, um, and, and that's where you're going to be. Try to get comfortable with that and, and try not to um, decide that that's not good or not useful or you want to be somewhere else. Um, yeah, maybe you do, but um, try to take advantage of every perception that is offered, okay? And use your magic, especially you, Heidi. <laughs> so, uh, oh, a chameleon. Um, yes, a chameleon is a lizard. Um, and the message about regeneration is accentuated 10 times over. Change who you are. Just renew yourself. Not Don't rebuild the same old thing. Don't regenerate the old you. Um, just become something new and different. So, very good. Uh, a bear. Okay, so that's a, a four-legged um, and glad you made it. It's a message of encouragement that says, yes, you will make it. The bear is the healer. And koala is, there's a little bit of a symbolism around the koala. Um, if I had to try to say it in a sentence, it would be that since the bear is a healer and, and that, you know, it's like, okay, what kind of healing? Who? 
where, when, who, who am I healing? Um, the koala is we all cooperate, co, it's a co-effort of all. So you're bringing people together to build a new world. So they cooperate all together in a way that, you know, they might not have uh, understood or the way that they may not have thought of. And so you're a healing force. Okay. It's a good thing. That's a very good thing. A crab. Okay. Um, okay. A crab is a sea creature. Um, and so it means a couple of things. Uh, it means, you know, go out there and look. Um, it's a bottom dweller as well. And so when you are a bottom dweller in the sea, um, the, the ocean is water, and that is emotion and feeling. And the bottom dweller, which is the crab, um, is able to assess the uh, what is everybody around you feeling. Bottom line, bottom level, what are they really thinking? What are they feeling? What are they really capable of? And, um, and so, and the other part of the crab is when you um, get a, a, like something that works, you are to grab onto it and not let go. You know, grab it with those pinchers and, and just hang on for dear life. And, and the other, you know, is a permission. Let yourself see, number one, because you're a sea creature. And let yourself know what everybody's thinking and feeling so that you can find the balance point for yourself and all of them. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful symbol. Um, crabs are also very family oriented. So you may end up working just in your family, <laughs> dealing with all that emotion. So good luck with that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Siggy says, can you please repeat the bird meaning? Sure. Um, okay. So bird, um, uh, let me say a little bigger thing. Bird is the symbol of the deep spirit of the self. In order to get to that deep spirit, you have to develop your consciousness. So in a nutshell, any kind of bird, doesn't matter what it was, indicates it's time to develop consciousness. If you've already started down that path, it says keep going and expand, you know, move into some other areas. And I think where we're at, um, you know, as a population right now, um, it's really asking us to expand in a lot of different, a lot of new directions, a lot. So, um, you know, do that, go exploring. This is really great. And, and and we're in a 3D world, so an expansion of consciousness in a 3D world is going to change the 3D world. It'll change the materials. It'll change the designs. It'll change the utilities, utility uh, and utilities. And it, it'll change everything about the 3D world, all the processes. So um, get involved in that. Yeah, it's nice to have some highfalutin spiritual goals and stuff like that. But the real work, the really rewarding work is uh, it's, you know, it's building a house. It's reorganizing your kitchen. It's fixing up your bathroom. It's cleaning up your yard. It's planting a garden. It's doing things that nurture you and the deep spirit of yourself. Read some new kinds of books. You know, books contain the contents of other people's minds. Read now and then, not just listen and watch videos, read. It's a much more contemplative thing. Uh, let's see here. So I was in the G Galapagos Islands and a big turtle met me and asked, what are you doing here? <laughs> okay, so the Galapagos is about reconnecting to nature and the turtle is about go slow little bit at a time and retreat. And when you retreat, um, the turtle doesn't just ret retreat into the shell um, for no reason. It retreats for protection, but it also retreats and, and then extends its attention out beyond the shell and is constantly asking the question, okay, now what? 
Okay, you know, do I stick my head out? Okay, is it time to come out of the shell? Okay, what's happening out there? So there's a, a telepathic and um, teleportation and communication aspect to that turtle. So, um, so answer, <coughs> answer that question. <coughs> Excuse me. I mean, hang on. Mm. What are you doing here? What are you doing in the garden? What are you doing with Mother Nature? This whole planet is the Garden of Eden. What are you doing here? Something good, hopefully. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, okay, dolphin. Oh, so the dolphin is the symbol of um, entry into or invitation to other dimensions. So those other dimensions... <coughs> Hold on. <coughs> I guess I think I need to slow down here. Um, the other dimensions can be, for instance, the world of a flower. It can be the world of, of a butterfly. It can be the world of a, a green pepper that you're slicing into your salad. It can be an E.T., it can be the world of dreams where creation just happens rampantly. It's amazing. Um, it can be the world of the way station where people gather after they don't have a physical body. So the question that I would hand back to you is um, which dimension would you start with? And don't limit yourself to just one. Okay, go exploring. Okay. Any other questions? Let's see here. Walrus. I see the walrus. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the walrus is another sea creature. It's not quite, uh, it doesn't have the four-legged aspect of it, but it is mammal. The big thing about the walrus is the teeth, their tusks, like these giant teeth. They, they resemble teeth. Um, and, and so what that symbolizes is pick something and get your teeth into it. Um, start some sort of re-education or uh, a, maybe a better way to put it would be new experience that, that, re that either re-educates you on something you already thought you knew or that opens you to a whole new world, a whole new perspective. That could be anything from computer programming and the languages that you have to learn in order to program or, you know, something else altogether. Um, you know, just let get your teeth into something. I would say get it into the new earth. <laughs> you know, make something happen there that contributes to that new earth. So let's see. Alexandra says, I saw a creature from a popular cartoon series. I don't know anything about them, but a big, fleshy, hairless guy. He said, I see you. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure. I don't watch TV. I never did. Um, so I don't know what cartoon series are out there. But when you have a cartoon uh, character or a cartoon dream, or a vision that is cartoon-like in its design and its nature. Um, there's a couple of messages there. Um, one, and, and these are important, the truth needs to be um, handled in a way that you can take it in. Okay, there's truth there. So the cartoon would say it's something to laugh at or take lightly, but the truth that's embedded in that is much more important. So that would be the first thing. There's a message here that's really important. The second thing, the big fleshy hairless guy. Okay, so big and fleshy means really deeply three-dimensional, fleshy, very material, even sexual, fleshy. Okay, hairless, no idea of what to do with all that. Hairless, it means no thinking, no thoughts, nope, hardly any perceptions, 
but he's awake now and he's saying, I see you. And so because it's a cartoon and because you have this big fleshy hairless guy, the message to you would be some part of you is waking up and that that's the big fleshy hairless person is you. The big fleshy hairless guy is you. And you're seeing a part of yourself in the future that maybe you can't quite articulate or can't quite get your mind around or can't quite figure out how you would get there or why you would ever become that, etc. cetera. Um, but it's, it's coming at you and it, it says, play with it a little laugh with it a little um and and watch see if it grows hair okay hair comes out of your head here is the symbol of thoughts and um you know the world making thoughts make the world okay <laughs> so very interesting uh elsa says i was greeted by a human-like creature um keywords in that are human and like Okay, um, the human-like creature says, this is somebody who's just a little bit different from what I'm familiar with. And the word like would indicate it's human enough that I recognize it, but it's different enough that I can't really say I'm familiar with it. So that creature is, you know, the human-like creature says there may be connections with ETs. There is also definitely some sort of connection with the self that is, I'm going to say it like this, other than fully human. It's human-like, but it's other than fully human. And that other than fully human piece of the self may be the highly developed um, spiritual self within the deep self, the deep spirit of the self. So very nice. Um, Neth says a little girl. Um, oh, that's lovely. Um, if any of you were greeted by a child, um, the message is go back to seeing the world like you did when you were a kid and ask, what does this mean? What does that mean? Um, you know, et cetera, explore, experiment, put stuff together, you know, dig in, look, all, all that kind of stuff. In other words, when you are born up until you're about seven or eight, maybe 10, everything is new and you are busy assigning meanings to everything. This means this, that means I'm a bad girl, that means I'm a good girl, this means you know, I've got permission to do such and such. This means I'm recognized. This means I'm not welcome. You know, there's all kinds of meanings that we assign. And so this, the little child, whatever it is, little girl or little boy, is really an invitation to go back and revisit all of your meanings. See the world anew, assign new um, meanings. Um, the reason that happened is because of this. Why? Because I said so. Because you're the one making your world. You make the decisions. You, you, of course, we get a lot of influence from the parents and the family and all the crap that's out there. But um, the bottom line is you decide to accept that and it holds until you decide otherwise. You set the meaning. Go back and review the meanings change those if you want. That's the permission the child gives you. So, um, so my creature was a man. How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> um, so a man is just simply the masculine energy. Um, you may or may not know him. You may or may not notice any features or characteristics about that man. All those would be significant in some way, but the a man if you're a male, so step into your full manhood. Be who you are. If it was a woman and you're a woman, you step into your full womanhood and you be who you are. Not the limited version that we all grow up with, <laughs> you know, but the version of the self that's really um, the potential of, of that self. Reach that full potential, you know, get sassy. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, let's see, NLP from, what's NLP from four to seven years of age? Uh, Jean-Claude, what does NLP mean in that? I need more information. So, um, okay, we'll go on. We'll come back to you, Jean-Claude. Um, I saw a unicorn <laughs> and he said, welcome to paradise. Um, okay, so the unicorn is a couple different things. It symbolizes a massive third eye, which means that there's clairvoyance possible, a full development of that in life. In secular terms, it means that you may end up starting a business. If you already have a business, you may end up building that business much more than you ever thought possible. And the paradise is exactly what it says. Um, paradise is when you know how to build a good world because you know what works long-term, short-term, and mid-term, and what doesn't work long-term, short-term, and mid-term. Some things work for short-term, and then they have to be rethought, re-engineered. Some things work for a middle amount of time, and some things um, work for forever. So um, congratulations on that unicorn. Uh, Matt Gal, what if you saw another land other than what you stated? Yeah, that happens. So what was the land? Um, did you recognize what it was? Did it have certain characteristics? Uh, you know, was there a shore? Was it cliffs? Was it mountains? You know, um, all those make a difference. If you had a sense of what the name of that land was, yeah, that makes a difference. So there's some kind of draw there, some kind of message. Um, Let's see. Ah, Deb says, I saw a Komodo dragon and it said, I am guiding you through this space age. Um, yeah, the Komodo dragon is what we said earlier. It's a four-legged, but it's also a lizard. So the four-legged indicates that um, you're involved in totally rebuilding your world, cleaning up your world. Um, it, it usually indicates that the world you're in is going to collapse and and, and it needs to be rebuilt in a cleaner um, fashion, more clarity, uh, more long-term vision. Uh, the Komodo dragon is re, uh, regeneration and eternal life and enlightenment uh, on a big scale. Komodos are not little lizards. They're big. Um, and they're also pretty poisonous. Uh, so you have to be careful that you don't get bitten to the uh, you know, you can get bitten in the new age world with a whole bunch of dogma that is silly, doesn't go anywhere. You have to go exploring in yourself to reach enlightenment. You're the key to your enlightenment. Never mind everybody else's prescriptions. They don't work for you. Some may be point you in the direction and you may say, yeah, that helped. But you're the one it's the secrets are in you so um marjorie marjorie says what if a choice was in between a raft and a canoe um well did you choose both um i have had that same sort of thing happen so the raft is um survival mode and so what it says is you can maneuver between survival and steering in a new direction now, if the family, let's say somebody's got family or they've got a business or, the, ah, you know, life can get complex um, and they're all pushing in one direction and you're like, I don't know if that's going to work um, to steer in a new direction. Wow, that takes some guts and some individuality and some strength and you probably need some support from at least a couple other people saying keep going keep going um it just you don't want to end up in survival mode and so the message is let's go this way so um in, in a canoe you're in charge you are in charge you're the you're the muscle and you are also the uh tiller that steers with your oar. So, okay. Uh, Deb says, a gentle gorilla. I was met by a gentle gorilla who said, welcome home. Um, okay, the gorilla is really a two-legged, um, not really a four-legged. 
it's and the gorillas are just they're wonderful creatures oh my god um they symbolize the unpolished human um with all the potential and from that point of having reached home which is the center of the self um you land in the center of the self and then you just begin polishing it says you're right where you need to be um start working with the you know the situation that you're in and go from there it's a watershed moment the gorilla often is indicates a watershed moment that point of standing up from four-legged to two-legged uh still being able to use the forearms if you need to uh an immense amount of power okay so nice uh dave said i view the rowboat as a safe place that i can help myself with the oars but sounds like i'm <laughs> a more fighting person as a choice yeah um you can't fight the changes um whether they whether you're fighting with family the system you know whatever so if you chose the rowboat then um i would say just try to steer the boat pretend it's a canoe and uh you know don't get caught up in trying to fight the current or trying to get to the other shore when the current's going this way um it's really hard to you know <coughs> get that boat to to cross that current without and you're going to go way downstream anyway so it's just get in let the current take you don't fight keep your eyes open and um you know watch for a place where you can have a safe landing so um, the rowboat is not all bad it it allows you know it, it allows for you to also to help others it's a, a hidden piece in the rowboat you can carry one or two others with you if they are interested don't fight with them but it says get in the boat and start downstream okay go with the current okay so penny it's getting closer to we've answered a lot of the questions okay. yeah yeah it's getting closer to um to the end so do you want to say a few last words um just want to mention okay. also that penny has another live stream at seven o'clock with jean claude yeah um, so if you want that link it was sent in your uh, in the patreon because this is here is only patreon people so the link is in the patreon uh, page so any last uh, comments penny um i think probably the uh you know the thing i would make a couple of comments i i've been especially actually it was in a um john claude was doing a video or a live stream in which he had um two people on leo zagami and um was it jay widener i think it was the other one and they were talking about this book and um and so i ordered the book and i started reading it and had this astounding um insight or realization into the what i had called the language of energy is so ancient um it, it wasn't called the language of energy of course i'm in the computer age and the technical age the digital age so what else what else would i call it besides the language of energy but in ancient times it was known as the language of the birds it was also known after that as the language of the argators or the argots <laughs> argator a r g o t and that whole story of jason and the argo knots and the golden fleece is all the story of how do you become a realized enlightened eternal being it's a journey and the language of energy is part of that journey if you learn that language you can guide yourself to become a realized eternal enlightened being or let's say you start in this life and it's going to take you three more lifetimes to get there but you can make this life so much better so much easier um not that there won't still be challenges or things that just don't don't go uh, or problems that come up um or losses you know that we have etc um changes that we don't want 
the the rule with you know with this language of energy is go deeper stay connected learn to read energy and as you navigate into the future uh, navigate towards something that's eternal and that is yourself you will have it's built in the potential is built in and that's what was hidden in the language of the birds um you know the saying people would say well how did you know that who told you that and what would people say oh a little bird told me why because it was not okay to use intuition it was not okay to say anything that you couldn't point to with um physical evidence and we still have a lot of that around. And I love that physical evidence. But I think we need to bring the two back together again so that we have, instead of either or, we have both the language of science and measurement and the language of unfolding ourselves to become eternal beings. Whether you talk in the language of the birds or the Argonauts in the search for the golden fleece, that golden fleece is the golden light that you step into once you become eternal. It's always there for you. Um, it's golden. It's, you know, this age that we're moving into, you'll hear people say um, something like, uh, we're, we're moving into the golden age. It was never known as the golden age. It was known as the golden race. And that indicated that the people took a step and became eternal. They stepped into that golden consciousness. Gold is the symbol of the fully awakened consciousness. So, um, you know, guided imagery, the language of energy, the language of the birds, the, um, the language of the Argots or the Argoters, um, it, it's the hidden language of sages and philo philo philosophers um, and things like that. And once you know that, you uh, the, the cathedrals, they, the actual book that I ordered is The Mystery of the Cathedrals. And that is the same thing in the Middle Ages, this record in stone of all of society's knowledge and experience same thing as the as the um the pyramid the, the great pyramid that's encoding the knowledge of their time the cathedrals encode the knowledge of our time and encoded in that is the journey to becoming of to fully unfold yourself sometimes joseph campbell called it the hero's journey um, is it a rough journey? Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, does it cost you? It costs you tears. It costs you all your biases. It costs you your agendas, your old agendas. Um, it may cost you some relationships. It may cost you some time and some money, but is it worth it? Yes, sir. It is worth it. Every step of the way. Um, so... Well, let me just encourage you, you know, I'm always gabbing on about the language of energy. Um, I just want you to realize that that's connected to the unfolding of the self and that journey of the self, the hero's journey. So, um, you know, I, I would leave it there, I guess. Do you have any other one last questions? Do we have time for one last question? I think that uh, there's, it's 10 minutes too. I think that perhaps you need oh. a couple of minutes before the next one. Yeah, you're right. Um, so <laughs> this was actually very nice. We were able to answer people's questions more than if there's too many people. So yeah. we'll, we'll try to do this again okay. um, if people you know request it. And yeah. otherwise, uh, we'll see you in about 10 minutes on uh, JC's uh, Beyond Mystic. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and let me just say thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. And I love the fact that you're interested in um, imagery as a way of constructing that new future. I probably should have said more about that, but we'll leave that for next time, okay? So thank you. <laughs>